papery crafty. And you can see that today I have a guest with me and that's because we are doing our part just like everyone else by staying home right now in these crazy times. Um, so just a note, you may see some different lighting on these videos coming up for the next few weeks or things might look a little bit different because uh, we're just doing it when we can right now. So, uh, but I just wanted to make a video for this week. I'm doing quilling paper, three-dimensional mushrooms. And this has been on my blog for a long time. They look sort of like Alice in Wonderland type of mushrooms. And for the stem, I used uh, quilling paper cones. So if you haven't seen my video from a couple weeks back about cones, you're going to want to watch that video first. So I will link that now. Go ahead and watch the cones. If you're already good on that, we'll go ahead and make some quilling paper mushrooms together. I'm going to be using 1 8 inch paper. I'm going to be using crimson, also some bright white, and some ivory. These are all from Craft Harbor Quilling. I'm also going to be using a small slotted tool. Needle tool will work fine. And then I also need the long slotted tool, which again is the one with a long working end, then a slot at the very tip. Also, you're gonna need some glue. White craft glue will work fine. And as always, I recommend putting that in a needle nose container. To start, we're going to make the mushroom cap. And this actually has two different parts. The first part is going to be what I used the red paper for. I chose four strips, and these are all the 24 inch lengths. So if you're doing these with a different brand, just take note, these are four strips of 24 inch each. I'm going to tear a little bit off all of the ends at once because that makes for a nicer, smoother uh, seam when you're gluing them all together. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to glue these all end to end. So I'm going to have one really, really long strip of paper. So to do that, I take my needle nose container of glue. I dab a little bit of glue on one end and I just stack another strip right on top. Press that for a moment and let it seal. You don't need too much of an overlap. I know there are a lot of quillers out there who just add strips as they roll but I found this just works easier for me. So I'm going to continue adding strips until I have all four glued together end to end. Once I have my long strip made, I'm going to roll it from end to end into a tight foil. Now bear in mind, the longer your strip gets, the harder it is to roll it when it's on your, your tool. So don't worry about it, taking it off the tool and finishing it by hand if you need to. I'm going to end up doing that here. So you can see here, this is when I continue rolling my tight coil by hand. I'm going to roll it all the way to the end. And then I'm going to use a little bit of glue on the end to keep that shape in place. And then the next step is going to be make the dome shape for your mushroom cap. You can use a quilling dome for this. I will link to one down below. Um, 
it will work just fine. I just chose to use my hand to show that you can do it with your fingers as well. Doesn't have to be perfect. You're just looking for just a domed shape. And once you're happy with your dome, you're going to want to put some white glue or craft glue on the inside and brush that out with a small brush that's going to keep the shape after it dries. For the second part of your mushroom cap, you're going to want to make a white insert. Here I'm showing three strips of 24 inch paper that I rolled into a tight foil in the same way. You can see it's still a little bit small. I want it to rub up against the side of the red dome. So what I'm going to do is add a little bit of a fourth strip. All I have to do is wherever I stopped, you can see the seam, add a little, little bit more glue and add another strip. I'm not giving an exact measurement to this part because it all depends on how much of the ends you ripped off of the red and the white strips when you began gluing them end to end. So some of this is going to be roll a little bit and hold it up to your red dome, see if it fits snugly. I think I ended up using about another half of a strip or about 12 inches on this part. So tear a little bit, glue it down try again and see if that fits a little bit better in there. And there you can see it's a little bit tighter and I think that's going to work just perfectly for my second layer of my mushroom cap. So I'm going to make another dome on the inside of this one in the same way that I used my fingers for the first part on the red mushroom cap side. And again I'm going to add some glue and let it dry. You can see there it sticks out just a little bit and that's exactly what I'm looking for. While the two pieces of your mushroom cap are drying, you can go ahead and start working on the stem to your, your mushroom. I'm going to be making a quilling paper cone for this part, and that's when I use the long slotted tool. And again, I just made a post about how to make different versions of the quilling paper cone, so go ahead and watch that video if you haven't. I'll link to it down below, and you can see here I'm just building cone. It's going to be about an inch long, I think, when I'm done with it. But you can make yours longer, you can make it wider. These can look as, as silly or as natural as you want them to look. I'm going for more of a whimsical type of mushroom. I do push my cone against the side of my tool while I'm gluing to give it more of a curved look. And just to note, when you are making 3D quilling shapes, you do normally glue the inside of your shape 
so you don't get any glue marks. But it's a little hard to get the inside of a cone, especially because it's a good idea to leave it on your tool while it's drying. So for cones, I make the exception and I brush glue on the outside and let it dry and that will keep your cone shape. When you're happy that your cone has dried, you can twist it off of your long slotted tool and now you can begin putting together your, your mushroom. So first part, I'm going to stack the red and the white mushroom cap. And again, I'm looking for the white to stick out of the red just a little bit. So I'm going to add some glue just to the, the inside most part of the red mushroom. And then I'm going to let the white sit in there and kind of even it all out. Put it aside to dry. I didn't mention having tacky glue on hand in the beginning of this post when I talked about the supplies, but it will make adding the stems a little bit easier, a little bit less time consuming. Hot glue would also work really well here because it is kind of hard to keep these stems in place while white glue is drying. Even with the tacky glue, it still takes a little bit longer than you'd like. So you might have to hold it for a little bit. You might have to blow on it for a while. Even setting up some sort of brace to keep that in place might be a good idea. The last detail for these mushrooms are going to be some tiny, tiny little circle spores to put on the outside for just a little bit of an extra, an extra detail, like I said. So what I'm doing here is I'm using some very sharp scissors to cut one eighth inch paper in half, which is essentially going to make one sixteenth inch paper. And they do sell this. It is available. Um, I have used it in other projects, even in some videos, but sometimes if you just need a little bit of one color, it's just easiest to cut it by hand. So then I just cut tiny pieces or tear them really into about an inch, inch and a half. And I'm going to use different tools to roll up circles. So here I'm just going to glue the end of this one on my small slotted tool again. And then when I take it off, it's going to be an open circle. But because I use a slotted tool, I have that little crimp in the middle. Just going to bend that out of the way. I just am looking for tiny little open circles that I'm going to glue on the outside of my mushroom cap. If you want to make really big spores for the outside of your mushrooms, you can use other tools. Like I said, you could use um, a toothpick or even like a bamboo skewer or the small end of a paintbrush, the handle, if you wanted to have bigger, bigger holes in the middle. But for these little ones, doing different size strips of paper on the same tool seems to be working pretty, pretty much okay. And now I can go ahead and attach them to the outside of my mushroom. I'm going to dip them in a little bit of glue. If you have tweezers like I'm using here, that's always helpful. I'll link to some of my favorite pairs down below. Uh, if you don't have tweezers, you can just use, use your hands. It will be fine, but this tends to make the process a little bit quicker. 
I'm just kind of putting them on there any way I like. I usually do sort of a triangle shape for lack of better explanation. So they're all kind of in the same spot. And let those dry. That's it. Look how cute these are. I love that teeny, teeny, tiny one. I think I, that was made with about one strip of quilling paper instead of gluing some end to end. And you can also see how the different way that I glued on the stem gives it a totally different look. So that's it for the quilling paper 3D mushrooms. These would look cool if maybe you did a different color besides the red. They would look really funky in like a blue or a green, kind of really whimsical. You can go anywhere with this. And if you haven't seen the, um, if you haven't read the blog post, the original one, I'm going to link to that as well down below because I show how I used them in a little terracotta pot with some moss just to make a little a bit home decor sort of a gift item. So that's another thing you can do with these mushrooms. But and that is it for today, and we'll have a new video next week. And, and, I'll say goodbye. Bye! 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 Bye!